Hey everybody, it's Crazy Van Gogh Shy. We hope you guys are having an amazing day. So today we are reacting to the third episode of Bad Batch. And what's it called? Uh, oh, episode three. I'm that early that the names haven't even been released. So it'll probably be released at the end of the episode. It literally, this time I was a half, I got ready half an hour early just so I could be like, okay, it's going to come out now. I need to be here on time. So yeah, we're about to watch the third episode. Again, there's no title at the moment, but when there is a title, I will add it to the video and et cetera, et cetera. Um, but yeah, last time we were left on a really good note. A, a lot of people say it was boring, but I was like, what are you talking about? Go away. Um, this is the content that I'm here for. Um, having a throwback to Clone Wars really was special, I think, in my opinion, as a Star Wars fan. Getting those little hints of like connections to the old series that we've all grown up with or people who have just watched it in general. Um, I just loved it because recently as well, actually right after watching the second episode of Bad Batch, I went and started watching Clone Wars. I'm up to season, I think season four. I can't remember. But I, like it gives me so many memories because it's so good. And watching the second episode also just gave me so many good vibes. It was like, oh, like throwback to, I think his name's Cut or Cutter, um, the clone who was the deserter. Um, when I watched that episode in the Clone Wars series, I was like, oh, it's so good and just yeah just the character development and stuff for him as a character as well was just really interesting and then again people talking about like you know the fact that um rex was there but then there was no mention of ahsoka so is ahsoka with him or is has she gone already like on her own mission that's something that i guess we might find out throughout the rest of the series um and also just the fact that Rex was there. That means that, you know, not that he's close by, but he was there. And just, like, it shows that we might see him, maybe. I mean, it, it's a possibility. Other than that, I'm super excited for this next episode. I, I, I know that there are promos coming out, but I don't watch the promos just because I always want to go in blind. I don't want anything. Because just because, like, I feel like, because they're half an hour episodes, I'm like... I don't want to know anything because it goes by so quickly. So I'm like, I've, I'd rather go in blind than have any details. So I've been staying off the hashtag, staying off the, like, YouTube. Especially when I see anything to do with Bad Batch. I'm just like, nope. I do not want to see it. Take it away from me because, like, I don't want to watch it. Um, but anyway, we're going to jump straight into this. And yeah, I'm super excited for this next episode. So let's get into it. But before that, please remember to like, subscribe, and comment if you enjoyed this video, but also keep up to date with all my other reactions to more TV shows, movies, and video games. So without further ado, let's jump straight into it. Hit me again. Well, that's all for now. Rations of love. Ah. You can have mine. Hey, Omega doesn't even have a place to sleep. You want to take her food too? Aww. Uh, uh... Don't be mean to Rekka. Oh, I'm just so protective of her! Besides, the shipwide diagnostic report indicated no critical systems were compromised. Oh! You sure about that, mate? We're gonna die, we're gonna die, we're gonna... Be fine, we're gonna be fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, crash landing. Weapon kit. Oh. Uh, fine. It's worth noting the possibility that Cross has actions were influenced by his inhibitor chip. Mm. He can do that? May I present our first elite squad? Oh shit! Top soldiers from across the galaxy. Imagine more squads like this being trained by skilled clones. Together, they would make a formidable army. Oh. Shit, so this is how they got rid of the clones. They got the clones to teach the humans how to do the shit, and then they got rid of them. Okay. Very interesting. What's wrong with you? Uh, I must have hit my head in a crash. The capacitor's in place, but other Oh, Rekka hit his head? <gasps> is he gonna- No, please don't. Oh god! The capacitor's gone. And that was our last <laughs> Oh my god, I'm so cute. He's like walking past the window. What I see tremendous value in. A tangible test is in order. We need to see them in action. By all means. Send the clone and your recruits to Andro. I want Sorgan and us camp found and wiped out. Let's see if they can succeed. Oh, they're going after Guerrero. 
Oh, the Prime Minister isn't happy about that. I wonder if he tries and helps. It seems like the Kaminoans are like, because of, wait, just pausing quickly. It seems like the Kaminoans are more like, um, they're trying to keep, you know, that investment of the clones there. Because that's why they're so famous, is because the Kaminoans came up with the clones, and not came up with the clones, but they were the ones who, like, helped produce them. And that's why Kamino even, like, that, like, the creation of the clones, like, that station is there, because, like, they, they, like, perfected it and made the clones. So, if they lose that, then they lose a lot of money, they lose, like, that sort of, like, greatness to their name of being Kaminoans. I hope their morals are good to protect people, but at the same time, I'm not sure, because, you know, we have seen in the Clone Wars that Kaminoans only do it, you know, for the money, and they also just create weapons and, like, create the clones for war. So I'm not sure, but yeah, I just hope they have good morals, including the Prime Minister and that other female Kaminoan. You shouldn't be angry at him. He can't help it. I'm angry at myself. We don't leave our own behind. They will find a way to get him back. Oh, cuties. Tell me this, Mom. If you all are so efficient. How come the Empire is scouting soldiers like us? Wait! Sounds to me like it's time for a change. Is that the voice actor who plays Anakin? It just sounds like a deeper version. Is that him? It sounds like him. I need to look that up after, but that sounds like Anakin. That's why I was like, wait a second. I'll check after. Oh, what a transition! Oh my god, that was great. Oh! <laughs> Oh no, please. Oh, is she gonna go after him? Oh no, Omega, please! Then you're of no use to the Empire. What are you doing? Herrera's fighters are dead. These are civilians. We should bring them in. Those weren't our orders. Forget our orders. This is wrong. Oh! Shit. Oh my god. That is the reason why clones, especially in this case, after Order 66, are perfect to execute orders. Yeah, it's going to be interesting because we have seen examples where soldiers sort of like come to their senses and realize how bad the Empire is and just how... They don't actually care about their soldiers. We saw this in The Mandalorian Season 2 with Mayfeld. Um, or Mayfield, I can't remember his name. But we did see that in Season 2 of Mandalorian. And it was it's so interesting to see both sides of the spectrum. And this is why I, I was so excited for this show. So we would see both sides of the story. Especially post-Order 66. So, yeah, I hope we get to see more of that sort of... Um, interaction between soldiers etc or like that sort of like if they're compliant or not to obviously follow the rules that's gonna be interesting damn this is like a horror movie i don't like it <laughs> well the animation looks so good though oh he's gonna track her uh oh oh it doesn't like the light oh is it blind Oh, it takes it takes energy or something. I think. I've got the pass. <laughs> oh. If Rampart has his way, conscripted soldiers will make clones obsolete. I fear for the future of our operation. They are Kaminoan property, and we only need one. Our survival hinges on. Hmm. So they're gonna try and make another version of the clones. Interesting. Oh, they cleared out the room! Oh, no! Crosshair. I honestly feel bad for him! What's Rekka been up to? Did he make a bunk room for her? Oh, what a B 
big sweetheart. Aww. Ah. So good. That was very wholesome. Yeah, this episode was... I think people will... Like, like w after watching it, I think people will think it's all over the place. But I thoroughly enjoyed it. There was different themes sort of, like, running through it. And I, I enjoy, like, episodes that sort of have different running themes that I feel are going to continue throughout the series. So I really enjoyed this. Obviously, again, there's that connection between Hunter and Omega. Sort of her looking up to him as... Not even a father, but more as a mentor. Like, a lot of people have been saying, it's so cliche that there's a father-child trope again. And it's like, dude, it may not even just be that. It may just be, like, you know, a mentor to apprentice sort of figure. It's not technically parental. I love the relationship between Hunter and Omega, but I also really like the relationship between her and the other clones, especially because we can see that I feel like Tech and Echo are the ones who are still a little bit awkward with her, just because I guess, like... Uh, again, they're not used- well, Echo has been around a lot of kids, I'm pretty sure, from memory. Like, when he was, like, in the Clone Wars. But I feel like it, there's still a little bit of awkwardness, so I guess they're the ones that need to sort of get a little bit closer to her. But with Rekka, Rekka's such a big, like, like, fluffy bear. He's so sweet. And I'm a little bit worried about him because he knocked his head and it was continuously hurting throughout the episode. So I'm wondering if that might have, like- um, effects later, especially because Tech was working on that little piece of gear to sort of scan inhibitor chips. So I'm wondering if that's going to come in later, whether it's Wrecker or another member of the Bad Batch, or even Crosshair they come across and they see the inhibitor chips and, like, how that's affecting them. I'm excited to see that. That's going to be really interesting, especially because now it's getting interesting with Crosshair's side of the story, because we're getting to see what's going on. So, obviously there's this new, um, level of troops coming in that are just normal humans and that's really interesting i think they're called are they the death troopers no death troopers no dark troopers are the ones we saw in the mandalorian i think these are death troopers from the from my memory you guys can correct me on this i don't know all the names and you know i'm not invested in that sort of area of <laughs> remembering of the names so if you guys could help me with that i would appreciate it but from what we can see um obviously crosshair is becoming a leader of this group and you know he doesn't take no for an answer as we did see with that particular soldier again going back to crosshair we can see like sort of like the difference between him versus like human troopers and yeah there's obviously that level of like where there's that humane part of being a soldier comes in where it's like do we kill the civilians or not and with crosshair he doesn't care like especially because we saw this in the first episode he didn't care if they were normal people or soldiers he was willing to kill anyone and that's the frightening aspect of these clones now after order 66 is because um n now they don't care they're willing to kill innocent people who aren't even involved with the war and just get rid of them. It's so sad. And that's the thing with Crosshair now too. Like, he, even though we did see this in the first episode, it's sad now because now it's becoming something he's going to teach to other soldiers. So it's terrifying. It makes me really, really sad just because like that hum like whatever humane or humanity that was left in him is now gone. And yeah, now it's really worrying, especially because now that's being taught to other like human soldiers. And yeah, that's really, really sad. And also, there's so many things that happen in this episode, but I really love the fact that we get to see also- We're getting to see all these different perspectives, and I really enjoy it. I love seeing the stuff with the Kaminoans especially, just because, again, they've been such an integral part of, like, the life of the war. Like, producing, mass-producing these clones, and bringing them to sort of life, and helping them, like- help the Republic and essentially create these mass weapons. And obviously they knew what these inhibitor chips are doing. And that's the thing, they didn't care. They were just like, we're making them with these inhibitor chips that were asked for. And yeah, we don't care what happens in a way. And yeah, it's so crazy and just weird and just, I don't know, it's messed up from that sort of perspective. But I guess what they think is like, sort of like, I guess, like, there's that honourable part of it for them. It's like, we have to keep doing this to maintain that sort of, like, like, I, I don't know, like, maybe, like, that hierarchy, maybe? I don't know if that's what they're thinking. But obviously in this we did see, like, we need them to sort of maintain, I guess, their importance in the war or maybe their importance in this new empire. So, 
it's really interesting. I find that the most interesting part, apart from, like, you know, the stuff with the Bad Batch, etc. That is so intriguing. I love, like, all these different parts of the story that not necessarily are deeply connected to the main part of the story. Them talking about creating a new um, clone is very interesting because, obviously, they have been talking about that since Clone Wars, that the Django Fett sort of DNA was sort of being stretched uh, beyond its capabilities because... It's just not as, I guess, maybe it's not as new as it was. And, like, even though they're maintaining it and keeping it alive, it's still going to maybe not be the same in another, like, year or so, maybe. I'm not sure how it works. But, yeah, I'm wondering who they're going to use as the new clone. If they are making clones, I wonder who the next sample is going to be used. So thank you guys so much for watching this. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please give a like, subscribe, comment, and tell me your thoughts on episode 3 of The Bad Batch. Obviously we do know from the Sizzle trailer, because that's the only one I watched, the teaser, which was the Sizzle we got last year, that Fennec is going to be in this. So Ming-Na Wen, oh, she's my female crush. She's so amazing. Um, just the fact that she's been across Disney, Marvel, and Star Wars is sick. That's, like, the most coolest thing you can do in life. Or, like, accomplish. That's just so cool. And just, like, I'm so excited to see her character in, like, in action again. Just because I loved her in The Mandalorian. And I cannot wait to see her in this as an animated character. Like, that's sick. And just... Yeah, I can't wait for when that episode comes out. That's going to be a really good episode for me because I love her character so much. But, um, yeah. Oh, there's so much. And, again, I want to find out more about Omega and just, like, her... Like, obviously she is... She's, like, def a defected clone. But, like, there has to be something else to her. There's something about her that, you know... I don't know. Not that she's different, but... There's something special about her in a good way. And I want to find out more whether she's connected to Hunter, whether they took some of his DNA and worked that into it somehow. Or if it's just like, she just has this sort of like enhanced ability that we don't know about yet. I just feel like she's very special. So that's why I want to find out more. And I hope we do in the next couple of episodes because she's a pretty insane kid and she's pretty cool. So that's why I love her character already. So yeah, I hope we find out more about her. It's going to be really good. But for now, thank you guys so much for watching this, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Crazy Fangirl out. Woo!